So welcome to True Health Tuesday. All right. <laughs> oh, you didn't have to do that. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm Dr. Danny Mendez, and I'm a chiropractor here with Dr. Bergman. Been here for three years now, so I'm just uh, super excited to um, be able to share with you tonight. So I've actually had the mentorship uh, of Dr. Bergman for 10 years. So um, I've known him since he had the ponytail, and he spoke at our school. So I'm like, wow, who is this guy? I got to follow him. So I've been um, blessed to actually know him for a little while and to be here with him. It's um, just a huge blessing for me to be able to share on his stage. So, all right, so we got a heavy topic these days. All right, so I'm going to talk about how to raise a thriving family in a time of crisis. Now, how important is that right now? But let's, ta- let's start with what the minions would say first, okay? So, I shook my family tree and a bunch of nuts fell out. All right, so can anyone, uh, can anyone relate? Anyone have any nuts in their family, right? So, um, you know, and we can see that uh, people get a little nutty in a time of crisis, right? Just go to the grocery store or whatever, you know? So, I love this quote by my pastor. The family can survive without the nation, but the nation cannot survive without the family. So the family unit is so important, and it's under so much pressure these days. We can obviously see that our nation is under pressure right now. Are families stressed out? Yes or yes? Yes. Absolutely. So obviously we can see that. Now, my goal is uh, tonight is to share helpful and practical ways on how we can just really thrive uh, in our families and not just survive. So how can you really thrive in a time of crisis? How well is your family adapting uh, during this crisis? Are you living in fear right now? Is your family living in fear right now? So let's talk about fear. I love this quote about fear. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Now this is a quote by President Franklin Roosevelt. This is a powerful quote. But this, he said these words in his presidential inaugural address in 1933 when they were just coming out of the Great Depression. So almost 100 years ago, our nation uh, suffered a big depression, kind of like what we're in now. Okay, so he was speaking to a nation paralyzed in economic fear um, of the Great Depression. And he was promising a renewed prosperity. He was speaking to the psychology and the psychosis of the fear and the panic that was going on at that time. So, but that's my vision for the family, a renewed vision, uh, focus, and having um, a really prosperous family and a healthy family and a thriving family, not just surviving. So let's dive in. Now, I have to warn you, this, this road is going to go a little deep, a little windy, a little bumpy. But it's gonna, we're going to have light at the end of the tunnel. All right, so now let's dive in. These are the current challenges uh, that the families are facing today. Pandemic, mask mandates, social distancing, shutdowns, violence, income changes, job changes, school changes, distance learning, virtual classrooms, pressures to vaccinate, and mental health. The whole world is different today. Just like that, it happened overnight. But it's not just about the pandemic. It's also about uh, fear, anxiety, stress, depression, worry, isolation, political tension, racial tension, crime is on the rise. The news constantly displaying the latest death tolls. Businesses are closed. Churches are closed. It's a ton to process mentally, even if you're healthy and able, right? So now we don't need a study that shows working parents are under more stress these days. All right, so now, but um, this study shows that working moms are suffering the most. Now, that one's not hard to believe either, right? The working moms are already under stress is managing a happy, healthy family. But w- coping with all the stresses and the changes that are going on in the home, the moms are suffering the most. Social isolation. Now, this meta analysis study by Dr. Lundstad professor of psychology and neuroscience shows that the, uh, says that the 
health effects of social isolation is as bad as smoking 15 cigarettes a day uh, and or having alcohol use disorder. She also found that loneliness and social isolation are as twice as harmful as physical and mental health as ob to physical and mental health as obesity. So this is showing that the social isolation is really really hard on our physical health and our mental health. Suicide rates are on the rise. Now this happens not just during the pandemic but afterwards too. People with known psychiatric problems are the most at risk. It is imperative that we decrease stress, anxiety, fears, and loneliness ASAP. And if you know anyone who is struggling like, um, right now with suicidal behavior, please reach out. The contact information, information to the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline is on this slide. Pandemic-inducing TV reports. Now we are blasted with this all day, right? Social media, TV, fear, worry, all this leads to mental and physical disorders. Anxiety, depression, sleep disorders. That's why we need to shut off the TV, fast from TV. That's called the devil vision for a reason, right? Devil vision, not just television. You, you would be shocked how much better you feel just taking a one-week break. Increase in family violence related to stress of unemployment, reduced income, limited resources, limited social support, increased domestic violence, and the homicide-related um, effect is there too. Family homicides, that's scary. This is also affecting the um, alcohol and, um, al sorry, alcohol abuse and family violence have been linked to accumulation of stressful events in the home too. And this is interesting, uh, kids being in the home where family violence is, is, is present are up to 60 times more likely to go through child abuse and neglect. Family is under fire, under stress. Kids are stressed today, obviously. Volatile environments, changing all the time. Kids two years old and uh, older are told by the CDC to wear a mask. I can't imagine trying to get my two-year-old to do anything, <laughs> let alone wear a mask, right? Uh, sick and toxic, medicated, socially isolated, distance learning. Uh, they're teched out seven and a half hours a day. So now, according to the Kaiser Family Foundation, kids ages, this, is a, this will shock you, kids ages 8 to 18 now spend an average of uh, seven and a half hours on the screen. And that's just for entertainment. It's not for screen time for educational purposes like uh, at home distance learning or whatever. That's, and they did the math, that adds up to 114 full days of screen time just for entertainment. And that's out of the year. So this is the reality of kids today. Kids are sick and we see this all the time in our office. One in three is overweight. One in six has learning disabilities. One in nine, asthma. One in 10, ADHD. One in 13, food allergies. One in 20, has seizures. One in 42, uh, autism. And that's, those numbers are also different. There's numbers showing in the teens or in the 20s. Yes. One, um, so more than 50% of kids these days have a chronic illness, suffer with a chronic disease. So kids are sick. Now, what happens to the developing brain with kids? So we know kids are sick, but their brains are just like sponges, right? 90% of their brain develops by the age of five. So those first few years are vital. They're crucial um, to their development. So when we see stress in the home, stress in their health, uh, their uh, social stress, whatever, that's gonna wire their brain abnormally and they're going to behave that way and that really sets the tone for the rest of their lives. But there's hope. What if the brain development has been impaired? What can we do about it? We can change the brain. It's called rewiring the brain and, and kids it's been known that this can happen. 
Uh, we can do this especially early on. They're moldable. The brain can re rewire and adapt pretty easily. But this can also happen in adulthood, and that's good news, all right? It's called neuroplasticity or neurogenesis. So what is neuroplasticity? It's the process in which the brain reorganizes itself and creates new neurons. It was initially thought that you couldn't do this after the first few years of life. That was the, uh, the, the mindset in the medical community. Oh, they're already developed, they're born, you cannot change it, but you can. And we do it here all the time. Whether it be a stroke injury, a brain damage injury, um, uh, kids with, uh, with autism or brain damage, we are doing not only the adjustments, but exercises to stimulate both sides of the brain so that the brain can rewire. Several studies are showing this, that adults can do it too. Uh, cross call exercises, running, biking, swimming, meditation, yoga, dancing, mental exercises, intermittent fasting, foods uh, rich in blue, uh, flavonoids like blueberries and c cocoa can uh, also help with this. Diet, obviously, the brain can rewire. Anyone like to dance? Yes. Perfect. Awesome. So uh, dancing is number one on the top 10 list for preventing neurodegenerative disorders like Alzheimer's dementia. So Sarah, play the music. We're all going to dance. <laughs> uh, so this is my family. Uh, I'm so proud of my family. I cannot even just, uh, I'll just talk forever how proud I am of my family. So, um, my beautiful, most amazing wife in the middle there, her name's Holly, and I couldn't do anything without her. I mean, just our family and the kids and just supporting me um, here, it's all really because of her. So, uh, I love you, babe. I know you're watching. <laughs> so, um, now, Three kids, all right, so Jaden, he's seven. Uh, my oldest boy, Aurora, she's about to be five, and we just had our, a baby last year. He's 10 months old, Justin. Um, so we're just, our hands are full, um, and, but we're just, our lives are so full, and we are really thriving. So I feel like, you know, this is possible. When we talk about can families really thrive and really be healthy, we are. You know, and it's, we're not perfect, but we're doing a, a dang good job, I would say. You know, so uh, our kids all had outside of the hospital births at home. So that was an experience. Really, really cool to go through that. Um, our kids are homeschooled and they um, are totally drug free and they're the healthiest kids on the planet. So it's just really, really neat to, uh, to be able to really see that from, with my own eyes. Thanks to chiropractic and the lifestyle that chiropractic gives, we have truly been blessed to live a healthy lifestyle. So it starts with pregnancy, actually before, before pregnancy, um, because you, know, you need to be healthy, your genes need to be healthy, functioning optimally before you conceive, um, but having a healthy pregnancy is just vital. It sets the tone for your family, your kids, and expressing that wellness, healthy lifestyle. But pregnancy and childbirth conventionally, most, mostly with, uh, and most commonly, is treated like a disease or an illness. Oh, you got pregnant? Okay, now you gotta get in. And, you know, and then the fear and the worry starts. And then, you know, we got to run all these tests, like we're looking for something wrong. We got to do ultrasound after ultrasound after ultrasound to make sure, make sure, make sure that everything's going okay. And then you need to get your Tdap and your flu shots because the baby can die without it. You're putting your baby at risk. Pre-scheduling your C-section is a great idea. Then birth starts and you rush to the hospital and you got all these white lights going on, right? And the nurses and everyone's just rushing around. What's going on? It's fear and stress mode of the nervous system. So anyone hear about white coat syndrome? Yep, right? So you go in for your, say, regular checkup and you go to the hospital and you see everyone and your blood pressure, boom, 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 boom. And then you're going to get, you know, uh, that blood pressure taken and it's high. 
well, yeah, Ty, I'm stressed out being here, right? So, same thing with birthing these days. It's called the law of sphincter. Anyone hear about the law of sphincter? <laughs> so, imagine you're about ready to give birth, right? And the same thing happens, the white cone syndrome with birthing. So, when you show up, your sphincters tighten. Your pelvic floor tightens, and it's not going to be the easiest birth experience when things are tight down there, right? So that's going to lead to a whole host of problems. Things are going to slow down or delay, and then we got to up the Pitocin so we get things going. And then we run into some more problems because we're not progressing, and then it ends in the emergency C-section. So it's just, you know, you got to really plan um, and prepare to have a healthy pregnancy and birth experience. Now, this is a really funny joke. I had to include this. I can relate to your pain. That cold I had last week, that was miserable. Oh man, that was so funny. But, but, and, but when I talk about pain, my wife was like, oh, it wasn't that bad. We birthed outside of the, of the hospital, and she's like, hey, it wasn't that bad. It's raising them. That's the painful part, right? So, but, you know, but my OB said that home births are dangerous. Well, it's, you do realize that, you know, hospital births are kind of a late thing in our history, right? The early 1900s, so about 100 years ago is when they actually started doing the, the hospital births. So how did you know, everyone else get here before that? But how safe is a home birth? So according to this PubMed study, planned home birth attended by registered midwives was associated with a very low and comparable uh, rates of perinatal death and reduced rates of obstetric interventions and other adverse perinatal outcomes compared with planned hospital birth attended by a midwife or a physician. So they are safer, especially if you're low risk. Now look at all the stress in these hospital rooms. Imagine the white coat syndrome or the law of sphincter here. I mean, this doesn't really look like a peaceful experience. You know, this is hardcore. All right. I, I mean, really, it's, uh, it's an insane experience and to someone who actually can endure this. However, to be fair, most, a lot of people just aren't healthy enough and prepared and trained or, or educated that they can do this. They can have a natural birth or incorporate something natural in their pregnancy or in their birth. So in, in some cases, this can be necessary because people, women, if they're not healthy enough, can't birth safely on their own. But for the majority of low-risk pregnancies, this can be dangerous too. Interesting. All right, now this is what a typical home birth would look like. Now, when we had our second, our daughter, we got a, home, uh, a birthing tub just like that. Um, and we lived on the third floor in the apartment, so I had to lug that thing all the way up. And <laughs> so, but just look how peaceful that looks. There's, it, it, everyone's calm. You know, they're in their living room. They're at home. It's a peaceful environment, so your nervous system is going to be just calm and relaxed and because this is a very parasympathetic or relaxing thing and it should be. This is my wonderful sweetheart. Uh, Ten months ago, last November when we had our third. Oh man, that day was just awesome. It was just amazing. So that was the day that she gave birth. And we were at our, in our neighborhood, you know, walking around, you know, we were in labor, so we were told to go for a walk. Okay. It was the most beautiful day. You can hear the birds chirping, the wind, cool breeze, the temperature was perfect. There was like no cars out. It was just like, oh my gosh, this is just epic. And then, um, you know, later that night, we were in our house, things were happening, and then finally, we caught, I caught the baby, and that was the craziest experience. I'll never forget it. This baby just fell into my arms. It was just, just amazing. It was just amazing. And also, we didn't find out if it was a boy or a girl before. We did with our first two, but it was fun to see what we got. So it was great. I'm so excited to have another boy. But my rock, my rock star wife, she's amazing at birthing. But we're definitely done. We thought we were done with our second. So... 
All right, so thriving families, they should aim to be drug free. Okay, just because it's common that, you know, uh, there's drugs all around, that you don't just reach for the drugs, you know, let's, let's, t let's try to be drug free. Let's, let's think differently here. Um, your health and your family's health. Is it your responsibility, your family's health, or the doctor's responsibility? It's the doctor's responsibility, right? No, no you're right. You guys are smart. It's your responsibility, it's my responsibility uh, for your health and your family, family's health. Uh, it's totally possible to live a whole life drug free and we see it here every day. Uh, a few months ago I had a patient that was over 100 years old and she wasn't taking medications. I was like, wow, I had to take a picture with her. It was exciting. So, and it's totally possible to be that lady on the right. Right? <laughs> All right. All right. So let's talk more about drugs. It's scary, the, our country, and how much drugs we consume on a daily basis. Uh, the United States spends more per person on health care uh, than anyone, anywhere else in the world. We're ranked 37th in the world in health care, yet we spend the most uh, on each person. We, as the United States, we make up 5% of the whole world population, but we consume up to 80% of the whole world's uh, opioid drugs. The average senior is taking uh, nine or more medications every day. The average adult is taking four or more prescription drugs every day. Today, by the age of 18, kids have taken 72 doses of 17 different vaccines. So on the first day, boom, the drugs are starting, the vaccines, the ointments, the antibiotics, whatever. It's just we're born into this and it's just common, but it shouldn't be normal. If all these medications were proven safe and making our families healthier, then absolutely, except they're just not. So should we treat the cause or just drug symptoms? It really is crazy that our modern healthcare just sees healthcare as treating symptoms instead of just looking for the cause or seeing the body as intelligent because the body is super intelligent. There's reasons for these symptoms. Now, the typical American child consumes a ton of fever reducers, antibiotics, just for normal and healthy immune system responses. This is normal. Remember, fevers are a good thing. Your immune system is at work for you. Embrace it and support it. Wrap your body in those towels. Sweat it out. Be excited that your body temperature is getting high and it's gonna just uh, wipe out and kill whatever is, is going on. Remember, every increase degree in temperature, your speed of the immune system doubles. So it's a really cool thing to support your fever. Yeah, you'll be a little uncomfortable. However, you're going to get over it a lot faster. If you take the fever reducers, you'll be, probably be a little bit more comfortable, but fever is going to last longer or your sickness is going to last longer. That's not fun either. The cure for the common cold is, you've heard this, the common cold. Absolutely. Most ear infections are sterile due to the, um, the pressure, the fluid, in the ear, it's more of an ear in effusion instead of uh, infection. And if you take your kid into the doctor because he's screaming his head off or you know in ear pain, they don't even bother culturing it. Here's your antibiotics. Good, you're happy. You know, but wait a minute. What are those antibiotics doing to to your kid? It's wiping out all the intestinal bacteria and flora. That's 80% of your immune system is in the gut. Why destroy it? And it, oftentimes we, we see it's multiple rounds, multiple rounds, because they just keep coming back because now your immune system or the kid's immune system is totally suppressed and wiped out. This study is so cool. So you may have seen this before. 332 kids with chronic ear infections uh, ranged from 27 days old to 5 years old um, had a course of care, of chiropractic care. And 80% of them showed no ear infections uh, for up to six months. So how cool is that? The person 
taking the most drugs has the most health. Said no one ever. <laughs> Every day we see kids and adults damaged by overprescribed drugs like antibiotics, steroids, fever reducers, and vaccines. These patients are chronically ill and multiple rounds of drugs are not working. So they try chiropractic as a last ditch effort. And they, to their surprise, finally start getting well. How cool is that? But the approach should be chiropractic first or natural first, drugs second if that doesn't work, and surgery last if that doesn't work. Thank God we have drugs and surgery in those times of crisis and emergency, but that shouldn't be the first choice. That's insane. If you have questions about a health concern, consult with a good chiropractor first. Uh, it could save your time, your money, and your life. Um, then those nutty people we were talking about, referring to earlier on, right? The funny people, well, I tried chiropractic and it just didn't work. Or my neurologist said not to get adjusted. I tried natural and didn't work. No, chiropractic always works because your body always works. Your body is run by your nervous system and that is always working and that's, your, that's how your body heals through the nervous system. Chiropractic is working to optimize your nervous system. If results aren't happening, then change doctors. Look for a new one. Demand more tests. Make sure you're getting a thorough exam. Make sure you're getting a posture analysis, nerve scans. Hey, x-rays. I'm so like, just impressed by how many chiropractors aren't taking x-rays these days. Most people that come here, come here because their chiropractor didn't look further and didn't take an x-ray. Oh, by the way, we're also uh, about ready to add our full body thermography scan and our live blood cell analysis. So that's gonna be exciting. And uh, you know, the reason why we're so thorough is because we care about your health so much and we try to do as much as we can to get as much data as we can so you can expect results. And the reason why you can expect results is because uh, we do so much uh, exam and, and thorough evaluation uh, to, to make sure we get that. Thriving families eat well and eat together. These times, we're home more, right? <laughs> so uh, we should be cooking more, okay? So it's a good time to start doing that and to prioritize eating as a family. And it should be, yes, the healthiest food you can find, all right? You're not gonna put you know, cheap gasoline in your Ferrari, right? You know, you're going to put the highest quality race fuel in, in this Ferrari, right? Your body is a Ferrari. It's no different. Okay, so we should be having home-cooked, whole, organic, fresh food. Uh, include the kids in the kitchen. All right, this can get annoying. A little heads up, okay? So my, my kids, I want to help. I want to help. Just know it's going to take longer. There's going to be a way more mess, you know, and someone might hurt themselves, okay? But it's worth it, okay, because it's... It's fun for them, you know, see it as fun for you, and it's bonding time for you and your family. That's a great way um, uh, to um, start thriving when you eat well. Support your local farmers. We like to go to our farmers markets and support them and, and, and buy from, from them eggs, meats, fresh fruits and vegetables, um, planting a garden. Uh, that's also fun. And right now we should learn about that because sustainability is becoming more of a thing and we really should. Okay, optimal health requires optimal food. Food is medicine. So you got to plan to meal prep. Uh, develop the habit of cooking in bulk. Learn to appreciate your healthy food because you are what you eat. How are you going to reverse uh, chronic disease, reverse arthritis, clean those arteries, heal leaky gut, uh, reverse brain disorders with, uh, with bad food? You're just, you're going to have a delayed healing response if that happens. So really invest in good healthy food. Boost your immune system. Now, Obviously, you know, that's a big thing right now with the whole pandemic thing, right? So top five supplements, vitamin C, vitamin D, fish oil, uh, probiotics, antioxidants. You could add zinc in there if you want. Your body is a temple. 
Invest in it and treat it well, and it will treat you well. All right, so these are my kids. Yep, I put them to work, child slave labor. So they're juicing carrots. Okay, so you know, one of them, a trained one, to put it down the chute, and one of them's gonna, or put the carrot in, one of them's gonna shove it down. So they just, my son just jumps on the thing. It's just like, it's like, well, careful, buddy, careful. All right, so train your kids, give them a job, you know, make it fun. So families are also, thriving families are well educated. Parents are researching for themselves. Teach your kids to research from the, for themselves. Don't just follow popular opinion, social norm. You have to do the, the research. And we are in the informational era. It's a blessing. We have, you know, at, the, at our phone, fingertips, we have inf anything you want to know. Just, just a couple seconds. You can even ask Siri if you're too lazy to type. But that also proposes some other issues and other problems because now there's so much information out there. He's like, you don't know. Now it's like, shoot, I don't know what's true or what's, yes, what's, what's helpful, what's truthful. So you've heard of fact checkers. Uh, and now you got to fact check the fact checkers. And then I was like, how do you fact check the fact checkers, fact checkers? <laughs> <You know? laughs> Filter what your kids are learning. You know, be involved in what they're learning and what they're absorbing in their curriculums, in their school, uh, with their peers. Train them. Filter. Make sure that you are involved in it. Ask the tough questions. Have them ask questions. Now, this can get a little dicey, too. You know, do your kids ever ask you the most ridiculous questions. <laughs> oh, I have to endure it all the time, every day. And you should get like an award or, you know, some kind of recognition. So one of the questions is, does God have a bike? Does he ride a bike? Okay, does, an, does a fly beat up an ant? Or which would win, a fly or an ant? Okay, why do the Ninja Turtles like pizza so much? <laughs> so, and kids obviously need support, right? Whether they're homeschooled, whether they're uh, public schooled, um, they're distance learning right now, so they're virtually schooled, you know, and how, that's, that's so stressful. So you have to support them and, uh, and encourage them with their learning. So homeschooling is learning at home where the parent takes control of the child's education. Parents and students have the freedom. So there's, these are the reasons here for homeschooling. Parent and student-led learning. So you have the freedom to go at your own pace without the pressure of the classroom. So that could be a benefit. You can go at your own pace. Unwanted vaccines. So California has mandated you cannot go to school without having all of those vaccines. So if you're wanting to avoid that, you homeschool. And my wife and I plan on putting together uh, another video on how to homeschool, what to research. This is another, most of these topics we're going through are a talk in of themselves. So, but we're going to talk more about that and how do you get around um, with homeschooling. Um, uh, pandemic concerns. So now all the kids are having to wear a mask in the classroom and they're separating the desks and making sure that, you know, you don't play with your friend, buddy, or, you know, to stay over there. So it's just that environment is just not healthy. So parents are saying, hey, I'm homeschooling now. Um, curriculum concerns. So just like what we talked about, you got to be involved in what they're learning and what's being taught today. School violence, I mean, bullying, um, you know, there's so many things are happening with, with, uh, with other kids right now, and it's just getting crazier and crazier. You really worry about their life when they're in school now. Uh, so having them home uh, creates a lot more peace on the family because you know they're going to be safe. More freedom and flexibility. So like like the whole student and parent-led learning, um, you can go at your own pace, but you can also like pick and choose what you want to focus on and what the, the kids are good at. You can foster their passions. And then it gives the flexibility to say, hey, buddy, you know what? I think we're going to go fishing today for homeschooling. I like that. So I took my son you know, fishing, and we had a great time. He's socializing with other adults that are there. He's learning to pay money. He's learning to talk in the real world. Okay, so homeschooled kids are also socialized too. 
it's a common thought to be like, oh, no, they're not socialized, they're home. But you have the flexibility to go out into the real world and not just be confined into a classroom with other kids. Co-op support groups. So this is another really cool thing. So homeschooling parents are coming together because, and supporting each other because they have to. They need that support. And this is like formulating your own classroom for the, for the kids. Uh, wherever you want, in a park, in your living room, uh, get creative. And my wife and I just formed our own homeschool co-op too. So they're going to meet with their kids that are doing the same thing um, at the local park. But we were struggling with what do we name this co-op? My wife was like, needing a name for this. Um, so we're like, well, I don't know, what do you think? Uh, well, what does the Bible say about kids um, and, and, and how they're being raised? Well, we like this verse in Psalms, uh, Psalm 127, 4, verse 5. Children born to a young man are like arrows in a warrior's hands. How joyful is the man whose quiver is full of them. He will not be put to shame when he comforts his accusers at the city gates. And that's our vision with our kids. They're going to be like arrows. They're going to go out into society and make change and, and, and do God's work or um, create, just make a difference in humanity. Uh, so they're like arrows. Okay, so we're going to call it the quiver. So that's our name. So my wife's getting just inundated with people wanting to join the quiver. So now this is what the classroom looks like today. All right, so it's going to be shields and, you know, distanced desks, masks. But how do kids learn in this environment, really? I mean, just like, um, I have ADD to begin with, with trying to pay attention in a classroom. I'd just be fidgeting with my mask, it'd be over my eyes or whatever. I'd make jokes with my, my classmates, like it's over my face. You know, it's just, this is just crazy. No, let alone what the mask does, it's gonna be lowering your oxygen and it's gonna cause stress in the body, lowered immune system response, anxiety. You can't learn and, in a stress state. So, but you know what? This is going to change. It's not going to last long. The challenge is with virtual learning. So, uh, distance learning is what it's called, too. Students must manage an independent schedule. So, these are some challenges. Easy to get behind in schoolwork. Some find it isolating. Increases screen time. Creates issues when you have multiple kids. Parents must oversee students' work. So this is a challenge. This is what kids are having to go through right now. So how do you protect your mental health as a parent and your well-being? Okay, because mental health is huge right now. We have to support and bolster your emotional mental health. So find those sneaky ways all right, to get it in. Let the kids have an extra 15, 20 minutes of TV while you take a bath and just have some me time. Save some of that extra chocolate or ice cream for later when they go to bed, you know, so you can have that to yourself. Make sure it's organic and really low in sugar. <laughs> <laughs> you know, get your family involved. So don't just isolate yourselves as a family. You want to, you know, hey, call the aunt, call the grandparents. Hey, we need some help right now. Can you come over and help? Do you have any free time? You have to reach out and ask for support. If you can, hire some outside help. And we've had to do that as a family too. All right, so I broke down and said, okay, we'll allow you, to, we'll, let's do a house cleaner once or twice a month. My wife was really excited. And yeah, so, you know, that, something like a house cleaner or even a babysitter, hire him if you can. That's gonna take some pressure off. Consider the pandemic educational pod, like a co op, what we just talked about. Get them together. If they're gonna do that virtual distance learning, by themselves, get them together, okay, and have them do it that way. Connect with a mental health professional. Therapy can be really beneficial right now to just help process all of this craziness going on. That can, uh, can lighten your load and help with your mental health. Let go of your idea of perfection. Now, I have really struggled with perfection, okay, so I have to really work on this and be okay with imperfections in the house. When I get home, it doesn't look like one bomb went off. Two or three bombs went off, you know, and it's just like everything's everywhere. 
you know, you step on Legos, slip on Hot Wheels, whatever, you know, so, but it's okay. You know, it's, I'm just glad my wife can focus on homeschooling and doing that one thing. It's like, don't clean the house. Don't do the dishes. Be honest and upfront with your employer. Hey, you can, you know, use this if your job has flexibility. Be honest, speak up. Do not let your partner get a free pass for chores or childcare. Now, I should have deleted this one. I did not want to include this one. Because <laughs> when I get home, it's not like I can just, you know, after a long day, you know, uh, just put my feet up and watch a show or whatever. It's like, okay, you know, so-and-so has a poopy diaper. They need their teeth brushed. Uh, someone, you know, it's like, okay, all right. And I got to, you know, continue to, to work. So, but communicate, that's the thing. If you don't communicate with your spouse, your partner, then everything's going to be like, okay, I'm just going to do my own thing and we're going to struggle. You have to communicate, get on the same page. Do not sacrifice sleep. Now, this is another tricky one. Like, I can, can tend to stay up late because I need my meantime. I'm going to sacrifice my own sleep. But you can't do that uh, either because you need to have that rest so your body heals, your immune system is boosted, and you can regenerate while and thrive while in this craziness and psychotic world that we're living in okay you need your sleep so don't sacrifice that remember that you're not alone so our healthcare system has two paradigms are you more vitalistic or mechanistic Vitalism, based on the premise that there's an in organized intelligence in matter. We're an intelligent beings. Even you know, abstract you know, things in the world, like a tree or, or a rock, has intelligence. Uh, or mechanism. This claims that existence is merely, merely limited to material causes and mechanical properties. So, let's find out. Is your family more vitalistic or is it more mechanistic? Now, vitalism concerned with the whole person, delivers the underlying, or I'm sorry, discovers the underlying cause of disease, stresses a lifestyle that is conducive to health, concerned with overall wellness, trusts in the body's ability to heal by being supportive and not suppressive. Now on the contrary, on the other hand, mechanism treats symptoms, uses drugs and surgery, forces the body to undergo immediate changes, Symptomatic relief. We don't care about the cause when we're mechanistic. We just want relief and I don't care how I do it. Focus on symptoms uh, disrupts the body's natural healing process. Now there's three stressors, physical, chemical, and emotional, and we all are experiencing those. A thriving family deals effectively with these stressors. Now how well is your family dealing with these stressors? How well are they adapting to these stressors? Stress, as you know, causes subluxations, misalignments in the spine. Those are subluxations, like the guy on the left of the screen. This leads to dis-ease in your body, dis-ease and dysregulation in the nervous system. Once that goes uncorrected, that goes on and progresses to disease. And that's, uh, if that's not being addressed or corrected, then it leads to death. This is the before and after of this patient here after 90 days of care. So you can get corrections, you can heal. The nervous system, if it's dysregulated under stress, you're gonna find that it falls between two modes of function. So your automatic nervous system, it's called the autonomics, has two modes of function. One part, keeps you alive under stress and that's the sympathetic that's your fight or flight mode i'm going to fight this tiger and try to survive and live the other part is the parasympathetic the side that heals and regenerates your body that's your immune system response your digestion the more that we're in this crazy chronic stress modern society that we live in the more the body is going to be functioning under survival mode and sympathetic the problem with that is it's going to break down instead of build up because normally your body builds up healthy tissue it regenerates heals and it breaks down chronic stress is going to cause it to keep breaking down so you don't have as much opportunity to heal and regenerate 
our modern society is like the Starbucks lifestyle, right? It's like, oh man, I got to get here, 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 now, now, now. And it's just, we should be living more parasympathetic 90% of the time and 10% survival. It's definitely flipped right now. We're just living just stress mode 90% of the time. And then if we're lucky, we get to have a few hours of sleep to rest and repair. Uh, so chiropractic fixes the spine, restores balance in your nervous system so your body can heal and perform well. The thriving family prioritizes the five keys to, to health. Now, you've heard of this before being here. Proper nerve supply, that's a must. Regular exercise is a must. Proper nutrition is a must. Sufficient rest, prayer and meditation, that's a must. So, we're, you can't do anything to these stresses that you encounter, but you can adapt to them well. So that's what you're, we're going to talk about. A thriving family adapts well. So get outside daily. Exercise is, beats the antidepressant drugs, a, I mean, a ton. I mean, it's, it's, you have better effect with exercise on the brain uh, than antidepressant drugs. Get outside da that daily exercise. Minimize the screen time. Foster more of a right brain creativity. If you find and see that kids are screen timed out all day long, then they don't, they're just bored all the time. They don't have any creativity because it's stimulating that left brain. So minimize that and do something more creative. Play music in the house. Except Baby Shark. All right, that's the exception. No Baby Shark in the house. You guys heard of Baby Shark, right? <laughs> All right, so and get some actual old school board games. My son is obsessed with Operation right now. So he's just like, oh, that red light comes on. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> laughing, be silly, sleep better, read a story before um, you guys go to bed. Uh, my kids, mandatory. I have to lay down with them at least five minutes you know, every night. Um, wrestle. There's lots of studies out there that show that wrestling together as a family promotes good uh, brain development and social connection. Except my kids like to do night wrestling. So I, you know, I, I don't recommend it, but because it, it can, can be dangerous. You might get a knee to the throat or somewhere else, you know, but it's really fun to night wrestle. Get a new pet. My son just got a new bearded dragon a few months ago. So he's obsessed with reptiles now, learning so much about it. And it's just, it's creating a lot more fun. Uh, do church and worship together. Do the I am exercises. Um, it's so important to get on the same page spiritually and emotionally with your family. So do things like that for, uh, for your mental health and well-being, but you have to do it together. Take a vacation. Changing your environment. That will help you adapt to the emotional stress too. Even if it's just redecorating your house. If you change your house, uh, that's going to help you adapt to that environment. Uh, it changes your, your environment, so that's perfect. And then shutting off the TV. Let's read more. Called the Devil Vision for a reason. Now is the time for a more specific, scientific, and analytical approach. Now, I love this quote by the physicist Nobel Prize winner Marie Curie. Nothing in life is to be feared. It is to only be understood. Now is the time to understand more so that we may fear less. And you can fear less as a family. You can thrive. Thank you very much. Thank you.